All right, guys. Cop sees combat vets life savings. Oh man, guys, I am just straight up depressed. Even seeing this video on my feed, bro. But we're gonna react to it. <clears throat> so let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. Nevada Highway Patrol. You know, I've, uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, a fair share of in encounters with the police, both good and bad, for the most part bad, because I ended up getting arrested here, but <clears throat> a lot of it was just to, just because of me, you know, I, I did it myself, so, um... I just wanted to tell you, Officer Brown, I mean, you, you, you're taking money out of my kids' mouths. Sorry. Or you're taking food out of my kids' mouths. Like I, like I said, we, we believe right now that this is drug proceeds, this is currency. Well, I'm going to prove you, to you that it's not. Perfect. Guys, this is sad, man. And we got to see that we're gonna, probably going to see the aftermath in the comments. But that was the, 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 the initial preview of what's going on, guys. Like, what? I, I did watch a video recently of, like, them. Um basically like cops be saying if they say it's drug money then they can confiscate it which is just super super sad bro it's not cool or more like institute never mind not that's a that's a channel then the name of the channel guys but sorry i opened that up Just two years ago, guys. Guys, every cop should wear a body cam. You know what I mean? That like, literally. That shows a retired U.S. Marine being robbed of his life savings on the side of a highway. He was not... Now, I, I thought this was just going to have commentary, but we have a presenter here. Not arrested for, charged with, or convicted of any crime. He wasn't even ticketed. This is a rare glimpse... Wow, man. So he did nothing wrong, bro, and they're just straight up... Confiscating. Come on now. Into an abuse. Come on now. Power that thousands of innocent Americans experience each year. Through a public records request, the Institute for Justice was able to acquire body and dash cam footage of an entire roadside seizure, from the initial traffic stop. All right. All right. Good. To the seized money being deposited at the bank. This is the most complete footage we have ever seen. Uh, they're just gonna straight up deposit it in whose bank account, guys? On February 9th. That's what I'm saying. They seize a lot of pro they'd be seizing properties and stuff. Like, where does this go to? Where 18, 2021, our client Stephen Lara was pulled over outside of Reno by the Nevada Highway Patrol. He was driving to visit his daughters in a small California town just west of Reno. That's a quite a far drive, bro. You know what I mean? Screw driving. Well, I would only drive if I was in a Tesla. Guys, I have never ever been stopped on the highway. This guy is just like being super picky here. I don't know what's going through his head, man. One time I was speeding on the highway, and uh, like some the California Highway Patrol, like uh, they got behind me with their lights on, and they did not like. I just slowed down, guys, and they they just like went around me, guys. I don't think they're. I'm not sure if they're even were chasing me, but I was going like. It just did it to scare me, it seems. Yeah, you know, initially I I thought I was getting pulled over uh, because maybe I had expired tags. I had a rental car. Unfortunately, I had uh, some car trouble, and uh, that was necessary to get a rental car for uh, a short duration. Um, for that, I've never rented a car, man. Don't know what it's like to have a ton of money like that. The weekend. I'm doing great. Hey, the reason I'm stopping you, we have a special enforcement campaign going on. We're trying to educate drivers about violations they may not realize they're committing, but we're seeing a big increase in crashes out here. First, apply John, you're driving. You drive great. You're driving really slow. It appears that you're driving, trying to drive safely under the speed limit. I appreciate that. I just want to talk about your following distance, especially around commercial vehicles. The Highway Patrol. 
Hey, this guy's being very professional at the start here, guys. Not gonna lie. The officer seems friendly and reasonable at first, even complimenting Stephen's driving. He orders. Damn, this is like some next level manipulation, bro. If he just goes and like flips the switch, man, he could have just been nice the whole time, and there wouldn't be no problems here, guys. Kind of sad. Stephen to exit his vehicle and starts asking him a series of questions unrelated to why he was pulled over. Police often ask questions like this to see if a suspect's story lines up. And it's such a dirty tactic, for real. You a fighter? A fighter? Yeah, you got a tap-out shirt on. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of training. I'm a retired Marine. I never had... Oh, there we go. You're mentioning the past now. What do your daughters do, man? Ever been in trouble law enforcement before? When did you leave? When did you leave? What part of Texas are you thinking of buying a house in? What were you doing for work up there? Yeah, quite quite a good editing on this one, guys. The officer then explains the real reason he pulled Steven over. Hey, why I'm working on this, let me ask you something, man. This is going to sound kind of weird. Um, part of my job out here is I do what's called highway interdiction. I look for people that are smuggling contraband through our state, across the country. Uh, weapons, humans, drugs, illicit currency, things like that. Anything in the vehicle I should be aware of? Okay. No, no firearms? No explosives? Okay. Um... Are there any drugs in the vehicle? Come on, he's a, a retired Marine. Let him go, bro. He has kids. Like, what is going on, bro? I guess it's because he's in a rental, I guess? I don't understand. Cocaine? I don't think so. Yeah, I gotta ask all these silly questions, right? Okay. Um, any large amounts of United States currency in the vehicle? Okay. What's a large amount of U.S. currency to you? Damn, bro. He, he, he didn't. He could have just said no right there, guys. Not gonna lie. Okay. So there's over ten thousand in there. Okay. How much money you got in there? Okay. Oh. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. I would trust the bank now. You know what I mean? Like, come on. It does seem suspicious to me. But you know. Bro, please put your money in the bank, like Cash App or something, bro. Um. But then again, like, you know, he's a combat pick. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Over 10000 like, wow. Quite a bit of money, right, guys? Sheesh. Um, would you give me permission to search your vehicle today? That's okay with you? Okay, perfect. Although it's Steven's right to refuse, he gives the officer permission to search his car. I didn't want to come across as being um, non-cooperative or combative. Bro. So he's trying to be friendly, but the cops, you know, in the end of the day, the cops talking it to him to, like, you know, perhaps maybe arrest him, guys. You know what I mean? A friend asks you to search their vehicle, you know what I mean? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't say, hey, can I search your vehicle to my friends, guys, in my opinion. So I did what I felt was right, and I was very uh, honest, very forthcoming. I was also very respectful. Facts. And I, as he has his hair like, i never seen a hairstyle like that, guys. I just wanted to make their job as easy as possible so that I could be on my way. To... He could have just lied and he would probably be let go though, not gonna lie. He could have said he had no money in the car. He could have said no to searching the vehicle. Spend time with my children. Hey Shane, how are you? Good. Hey, can you head out to a traffic stop or are you busy on that other stuff? I'll take. Calling the DEA as well? Wow. Let me go grab a sip of water here, guys. It's a bit soda. Uh, so far, I'm still searching a car, but a uh, big bundle of money says probably at least 100000 That in Are you serious? 100 k Oh my gosh, this guy's rich. Interaction shows what's at the heart of the officer's interest in Stephen. He knows that even though Stephen did nothing wrong, the DEA will adopt the seizure of his cash and return a portion of the money to the Highway Patrol for the favor of giving them the case. Here's how an adoption works. Oh my gosh, this is so sad. When state or local police seize cash, cars, or other property, federal law enforcement takes over the forfeiture. The federal agency does all the work, 
and kicks back up to 80% of the proceeds to the state agency that seized the property. So he's, he's doing it for the profit here, guys. He's like, yo, I'm going to take all your money. That is just so sad, bro. Shaking my head. Why does this even happen, bro? There's no, there's no reason. Like, he, it was, it wasn't illegally obtained, man. In Stephen's case, that would mean the DEA would take control of the cash and seek to forfeit it through federal law, ignoring the important limitations that Nevada law places on seizures and forfeitures. In 2019 alone, federal agencies made $334 million in equitable sharing payments to state and local. I wonder how much they're really making a year from all these seizures, guys. What is going on, man? Local law enforcement agencies. In this case, the Nevada Highway Patrol stands to gain nearly $70,000 by taking Stevens' money. I think you're a good guy. I'm a good guy. <laughs> how, so how much cash is that? About 100 grand. 100 grand. Okay. So, as you know, right, I, I'm a vet, he's a vet, you're a vet. It's not illegal to carry currency, have currency. Yes, sir, it's not. It does, though... Well, this is how he's breaking it to him. He's still sounding friendly. This guy does not know what's going to happen, though. And we're going to see how he reacts here. Make us ask some questions on why someone has 100000 I can understand why you don't trust banks, especially in this day and age right now. Stephen keeps his savings in cash. Maybe that's uncommon, but as the officer acknowledges, it's not illegal. I have nothing to hide from you. I appreciate that. Um, give me a few seconds. Can I make a couple phone calls, right? Yeah. Um, the officer first called. He's like, in the back of the head, he, you know, he's still acting right. He's like, you know, how am I going to try to get this money to be seized? Like, all the money from him. So sad, bro. Calls his superior. He interrupts that call to speak again with the DEA agent. Are you on your way out here? Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from Shane to see if he comes out here. This is a... Uh, it's a strange one, but not a strange one. Um, consented to a search, said there was money up there. We located what he says is $100,000. It's in a, uh, a Ziploc sandwich baggie. Um, there's also, I haven't gone into it a bunch, I'm waiting to hear back to the but there's a bunch of bank receipts and stuff in there as well um, to show the, the currency. Uh, this might be Shane, hold on a second. Hey, this is Shane, let me find that. And he has a, he has a bank receipts and everything, man. Probably has like a deposits coming in from like the military there, right? You know what I mean? What is going on, man? Around 20 minutes later, the officer's superior, a highway patrol sergeant, is recorded on his body cam chatting with the same DEA agent who apologizes for not being able to make it. Uh, no issues. It's too easy to do an adoption. You know, we contacted you, so I think everything's going to be okay. Um, and I'll, I'll text you the, the money. An adopting, adoption, yeah, they're adopting their money, aka okay, stealing it, right? So sad. Money count after we get it, it'll probably be a couple hours. Remember, there's still no probable cause to seize Stephen's money. All the officers have is a large amount of cash, and cash is not a crime. But the sergeant isn't giving up. Just like the sergeant uh, said earlier, man, come on now. So why, why the distrust of the bank system? I just don't trust him. That's just, that's just my, it's my reasoning, it's my personal thing. Oh, I'm not, I'm and, not trying uh, to convince you one like, or the other, it's just, it's, it's not usual. After questioning... I trust the bank, bro. I'm good on getting robbed in, in daylight, like, the, this guy is, man. By, by the government agency, the guys that are supposed to protect you, man. And Steven, the sergeant speaks privately with the officer who pulled him over. What are your thoughts, Chris? I, I, I have leaning more towards, um... It, it's odd, but it's odd, but it's not packed it's like not, normal. No, and, and he's answering the questions. There's there's receipts here, and it. And I would like knows. to put I would like to put um, the dog on the currency man. Okay. The two officers agree that Stephen has been forthcoming and has years worth of bank receipts showing that he has withdrawn his savings from his bank accounts. But the sergeant orders the junior officer to put the dog on the currency. The sergeant puts Stephen's money in an open Ziploc bag and throws the open package to the ground on the side of the road, less than 40 yards from Stephen's car. So they're really trying to stage an event on body cam, guys? What is going on?
Positive alert. Huh? We'll go forward. Okay. This positive alert appears to have given the sergeant what he thinks he needs to take Stephen's life savings. Remember, both officers have planned all along to hand the money to the DEA. They are looking for a legal justification. But what was the whole point of that, man? That was a super dirty tactic. Imagine how often this happens when the cameras aren't rolling, bro. So sad. Numerous studies have shown anywhere between 67 and 100% of U.S. currency has trace amounts of drugs. I know, right? Like, come on now. For that reason, a dog alert to currency on its own does not show the currency was used in an illegal drug transaction. What we're going to do, I believe there's drug currency that's dog alerted to it. Drug proceeds? Yeah, it's very common, sir. We get people that are trafficking large quantities of marijuana from Northern California to all states east, even from Reno. Sir, I, I can tell you so, right now. There's, so, so we're, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, okay? We're going to seize it today, but that doesn't mean we're the final judgment on it. Gonna go through the DEA, okay? So the DEA will contact you. Bro, I'll be, I'll be legit heartbroken, man. What are they? So sad, man. I, I'm literally awestruck. Like, come on. The DEA will, will uh, provide you with a means to give him back his money, bro. Um, to fight it, you're gonna have to provide your, your pay stubs. You're gonna have to provide, provide your other receipts and stuff like that. Okay. Stephen now has nothing. He had to convince his brother to wire him a thousand dollars to continue his trip to see his daughters. I just want to let you know, I, I know you're just doing your job. That money I worked really hard for. Money that I have in my jacket is only a few dollars. That's the money to pay for my kids, my bills, my, my hotel. We're going to get that car out to Texas. So, After nearly an hour and same bro, like come on. And a half on the side of a highway, Stephen was given a receipt for U.S. currency with a number to call the DEA agent. This is all I get here. That's what you get, yes, sir. You're gonna get noticed in the mail as well at that address, okay? I find it like how is he gonna pay his bills and stuff, man? Thankfully, his brother helped him here. Even more so concerning that if this could happen to me as a combat veteran who served overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, this could happen to anybody. After six months without his nearly $87,000, Stephen sued the DEA in federal court to get it back. Only then, after the Institute for Justice filed a lawsuit on his behalf, and the Washington Post called the agency for a comment, did they agree to return Stephen's cash? Stephen may have gotten back his money, but his case goes on. Stephen and the Institute for Man, they should be paying him extra after all that. What happened, bro? Come on. Justice are also suing the Nevada Highway Patrol in state court to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Stephen's situation isn't unique, but he is one of the lucky ones. He will get his money back. Totally unjustified, Most man. Most victims of forfeiture don't have a public interest law firm like IJ to take their case. And if they cannot afford an attorney and cannot figure out how to navigate convoluted forfeiture processes on their own. Well, that's why it's not a recommended to carry a large amount of cash, guys. They'll just say it's drug money. The government walks away with their property without ever having to prove any crime. This highway robbery must end. It is time to abolish civil forfeiture. Facts, bro, facts. Man, that's a legit a sad story, man. From not trusting Baines to not trusting cops, I know, right? Couldn't sleep tonight thinking about the story. Then so I got sued and got his all money back. 
His money back plus interest. Oh, he did. Nice. He was open but corroborated. I know, right? He, come on now. It took him an hour and a half to take everything he, he made. Reason what happened with badges. Disrespect. I know, right? It's like getting robbed by like somebody that was in the army with you, bro. It's so sad. This poor man fought for the country. Now this is how he's treated. Heartbreaking. Highway, uh, no, legit highway robbery, guys. Yeah, he was pretty calm and collected after what happened as well, though. Respected salute indeed. Man, pretty, pretty sad. Pretty sad. MS-13 member leader arrested during tra traffic stop in Ohio. We, should, we might react to that next, but yeah, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, check out original video in the description. Uh, yeah. You can donate here to help fight. Uh, to help support the cause here as well in, in the description. And yeah, I do all my reactions live on Twitch, so come and say hi. You know, donate would donations appreciated. And I'll see you guys next time.